Kelsey Jam. Welcome home. 2.0. Year two. Year two in Kansas City. You see Blake Lively as Lily Bloom for the first time. Your reaction is? I will never picture anyone else. We got some great acts and Little Wayne, Diplo, and Two Chains, and uh, some great food. So it's a, it's always a fun atmosphere. Make sure you check out Kelsey Jam, baby. It's always a it's always a riot. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I might be a little biased towards the Torture Poet Department, just a little bit. Kelsey Jam rocks, Casey. Travis Kelsey, the dynamic tight end of the Kansas City Chiefs, is back with the second annual Kelsey Jam Music Festival, promising an electrifying experience for all. Set to take place on Saturday, May 18 at the Azura Amphitheater, this year's lineup is nothing short of spectacular. Kelsey has personally curated a list of headliners that includes rap legends Lil Wayne, Diplo, and 2 Chains. We got some great acts and Lil Wayne, Diplo, and 2 Chains, and uh, some great food. So it's, a, it's always a fun atmosphere. You personally curated this list. It is so good. Yeah. Has music always been a huge part of your life? I feel like I'm learning so much and uh, you know, I just, uh, I have all trust that they're gonna make me look good because I don't know how good I am. Make sure you check out Kelsey Jam, baby. It's always a, it's always a riot. Artists he passionately describes as some of his favorites in the world. Reflecting on last year's success with headliners Machine Gun Kelly and Rick Ross, Kelsey expressed his excitement in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. It was so fantastic that I had to do it again this year. I'm very excited, he said. Determined to keep the festival fresh and exhilarating, Kelsey promises an unforgettable night of music and celebration. In addition to the headliners, the festival will feature performances by DJ Irie and hometown hero DJ EV, ensuring a mix of high-energy beats and hometown pride. Kelsey's enthusiasm is palpable. It's going to be so much fun, and I can't wait to get back out there and celebrate with KC. It's just a blast every time we get together to celebrate these back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins, he added. One of the hottest topics surrounding this year's festival is the potential appearance of Taylor Swift. Despite speculation and fans' hopes, Swift will not be attending due to her era's tour stop in Stockholm on the same day. However, Kelsey, who has clearly been inspired by Swift's performance style, shared what he's learned from the pop icon. Don't try to be Taylor, that's what I learned, he joked. She's in another stratosphere. She's the best at what she does for a reason. Kelsey Jam, welcome home. 2.0. Year two. Year two in Kansas City. Finally, uh, if you could pick any Taylor Swift songs to be a part of this festival, what would they be? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I might be a little biased towards the Torture Poet Department, just a little bit. Attended a lot of eras tours, as a good boyfriend does. Uh, what is your favorite era on the tour? So high school might be the only one that's just, just jumping into my mind right now. I think everybody get fired up for that one. Kelsey admires Swift's ability to connect deeply with her audience, a quality he aims to emulate. I think that's something I could probably take. She really connects with the people she performs for, so I embrace that, he noted. His commitment to creating a memorable experience for fans is evident as he looks forward to a night filled with music, celebration, and community. For those eager to join the festivities, Tickets for Kelsey Jam range from $50 for general admission to $250 for a VIP experience, with pre-sale registration available on KelseyJam.com. Tickets go on sale this Friday, and the event will also be live-streamed via Kelsey's and Kelsey Jam's social media accounts for fans who can't attend in person. Kelsey Jam is shaping up to be a monumental event, celebrating not only the Chiefs' consecutive championships, but also the vibrant music culture Kelsey cherishes. Whether in person or online, fans will have the opportunity to partake in this unique fusion of sports and music, making it a night to remember. Blake's Taylor Swift Favor In a fascinating behind-the-scenes revelation, Justin Baldoni recently shared how Taylor Swift's hauntingly beautiful song, My Tears Ricochet, ended up as the backdrop for the newly released trailer of the highly anticipated movie It Ends With Us. Speaking to Entertainment Tonight at the premiere of the Garfield movie, the Jane the Virgin actor credited none other than Blake Lively for this musical coup. Baldoni, 40, who stars in It Ends With Us alongside Lively, 36, was full of praise for her pivotal role in securing the song. That's all Blake, he said. I have no idea how she did it, but Blake knows everybody. Her and Taylor are very good friends. The connection between Lively and Swift is well known, with the two sharing a close friendship that has often been highlighted in the media. It seems Lively's friendship with the 34-year-old pop sensation was instrumental in bringing this collaboration to fruition. The trailer, featuring Baldoni and Lively in the roles of Ryle Kincaid and Lily Bloom, 
captures the initial stages of their character's romance, only to hint at the tumultuous journey that follows. Swift's My Tears Ricochet provides a poignant and fitting soundtrack, enhancing the emotional depth of the scenes. Baldoni expressed his delight at having Swift's music in the trailer, saying, I'm so happy that they agreed to have a song in the trailer, it's so perfect for the movie. The song's inclusion adds an extra layer of resonance to the film, which is based on the best-selling novel by Colleen Hoover. The story has a significant following, particularly among women, and the song's emotional intensity aligns perfectly with the narrative's themes of love, heartbreak, and resilience. You see Blake Lively as Lily Bloom for the first time. Your reaction is? I will never picture anyone else. It could have been a, just an, a tree and there would have been chemistry. And it'd, it'd be like, oh my God, the tree did so good with Blake. I refused to get excited because I was like, oh, what if it doesn't happen? Because I was so excited that that was a possibility. Yeah. Tell the chemistry, even just in the first look photos, like the stills before you can even see any of the visual media. Social media is amazing in that way. Like it gives fans a voice. And if it were not for the fans, we would not be making this movie. Reflecting on the overall reaction to the movie, Baldoni shared his thoughts on the positive reception of the set pictures released in May. I'm just happy that the reaction has been so positive, he said. I know fans have been waiting a long time for this, and it's a very special book for a lot of reasons, to a lot of women especially, and our mission is just to do right by them. The film's journey from page to screen has been anticipated, and the involvement of stars like Baldoni and Lively combined with Swift's musical contribution, has only heightened the excitement. Baldoni's comments underscore the dedication of the cast and crew to honor the source material and its devoted fans. Our mission is just to do right by them, he emphasized, acknowledging the responsibility of adapting a beloved love story. The inclusion of My Tears Ricochet in the trailer is not just a testament to the power of friendship, but also a perfect example of how collaborative efforts in the entertainment industry can create moments of magic. As the release date of It Ends With Us approaches, fans can look forward to a cinematic experience that promises to be as emotionally compelling as the book itself. Taylor's Stockholm Showstopper Shine Taylor's Eras Tour recently made a sensational stop in Stockholm, Sweden, dazzling fans with three consecutive sold-out shows at the Friends Arena from May 17 to May 19. These performances were not only a milestone in Swift's illustrious career, but also marked the European debut of a strikingly new segment titled Female Rage the Musical. This portion of the setlist was dedicated to songs from her latest album, The Tortured Poets Department, a move that had fans buzzing with excitement. The 34-year-old pop icon did not disappoint. Each night, Swift performed seven tracks from TTBD, delivering raw and powerful renditions that left the audience spellbound. To add an extra layer of delight, she treated her Swedish fans to an exclusive acoustic song from the album each night, Peter on Friday, Guilty as Sin on Saturday, and How Did It End on Sunday. The uniqueness of each performance was a testament to Swift's commitment to making every show a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Excitement surrounding these concerts reached fever pitch, especially with the recent news that Swift's company, Taz Wright's Management, had filed a trademark application for Female Rage the Musical. This move hinted at even more thrilling developments on the horizon, potentially expanding the TTPD era beyond just the concert stage. The shows opened with a captivating, updated intro mashup that seamlessly incorporated TTPD alongside titles from Swift's extensive discography. The fresh start set the tone for the night, leading into an explosive rendition of But Daddy I Love Him, which kicked off the TTPD segment. Among the highlights was a song dedicated to her boyfriend Travis, aptly titled So High School, a track that resonated deeply with the crowd. Can you believe this is our 87th show? Oh. Yeah. 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 Swift continued to mesmerize the audience with a powerful sequence of songs, including Down Bad, Fortnite, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, and Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. She concluded this intense segment with the poignant I Can Do It With a Broken Heart, leaving fans in awe of her emotional depth and lyrical prowess. 
Throughout the three-night extravaganza, Swift also thrilled the audience with creative mashups of her past hits. Notable combinations included I Think He Knows Gorgeous, Say Don't Go, Welcome to New York Clean, and the crowd favorite medley of Message in a Bottle, How You Get the Girl, New Romantics. The record-breaking nature of these concerts added another layer of excitement. Swift proudly announced during the first show, you have made this the most highly attended show ever in this stadium. You broke the all-time attendance record. You guys are absolutely wild. Referring to the previous record of 58,163 attendees set during the 2019 Avicii Tribute Concert. Following her triumphant run in Sweden, Swift is set to continue her European tour with highly anticipated shows in Portugal and Spain, before wrapping up the European leg in London come August. The Eras Tour will then return to North America, gracing stages in Toronto and Vancouver, followed by an extensive series of additional dates across the U.S. Swift's tour continues to solidify her status as a global music phenomenon, delivering unforgettable performances that captivate and inspire fans worldwide. Swift's Chart-Topping Triumph Taylor is back at the pinnacle of the UK Albums Chart with the Tortured Poets Department. As the European leg of her Eras Tour kicks off in Paris, her latest album ascends to number one for the third non-consecutive week. This chart triumph aligns perfectly with her upcoming stadium shows across the UK in June, including performances in Scotland, Northern England, Cardiff and London's iconic Wembley Stadium. Meanwhile, Kings of Leon make a striking entrance at number two with Can We Please Have Fun, their ninth studio album produced by Kit Harpoon. The Followill family band, known for their electrifying rock sound, had been leading the midweek charts with this release, which also clinches the title of the week's bestseller on vinyl. Dua Lipa's radical optimism takes a slight dip from number one to number three, maintaining strong momentum on the charts. Gunna's One of One debuts at number four, matching his previous career best with DS Forever. Additionally, Keane's Hopes and Fears makes a nostalgic return to the top 10, landing at number 7 thanks to a 20th anniversary deluxe reissue. Manchester rapper Bugsy Malone also celebrates success with The Great British Dream, entering at number 13 and marking his 6th UK Top 40 album. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.